All right, let's get started drawing with these uh, push, pop, translate, and rotate functions. First, let's set up our project. I've created a folder on my desktop called P5 System. And in there, I have a folder called Libraries that I created. I also have an index.html file, and I've got my sketch.js file. All there is in there is a blank setup and draw loop. These are just my notes for this video. You don't need those. And before we get into this stuff, let's download some files for our library. The most important one uh, to start out with is this SVG file, uh, p5.svg.js. That is a library that's going to allow us to draw with SVGs instead of pixels and allows us to download all of the SVG shapes we've created. It was created by this intrepid person, and we thank them very much for their work. If you go to this site, link is in the notes, or you can just take a look up here. And go down to Getting Started. And then um, go to this Add P5 SVG can be downloaded here link. And then we're going to get both of these links. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, if you go to p5.js and download the latest version, it may not work for you with this library. Um, it requires... 0 0.4.13 um, we've actually and by we I mean some very nice folks uh, on YouTube when I initially posted this video it was breaking for some people and um, Brad Zephyrin took a look into it along with uh, Jonathan Koffel and figured out that um, everything at 0 0.4.17 and below will work but after that 18 and above does not so what that means for you is, in plain, simple English, download the library using this and also download P5 from here, not from the P5. Don't do this. Not from P5, P5's website. Okay? And then once you have those, bring them in here. This is a, an old version, so I'm, I'm just going to delete this and walk through it with you. Um, so I have this. I can show it in my finder p5.js and crack open a new window here for where is it oh you're seeing all of my personal files isn't that cute libraries and I can just pull that in there and we'll do the same for our p5.js file show hey show in finder p5.js great so now we have those, and we're all set. Um, next thing we need to do is check the index.html file, which is here. We need to load, I've done it again. Uh, we need to load these files. So just two script tags, one pointing to the libraries folder with p5.js, and then let's also load the p5.svg dot js and then uh, sketch dot js and that should be all of our files so we're here and let's do something mega simple just say hi and um, if you are in sublime text like I am you can right click in your HTML file and click open it in browser and it'll open right up for you so you don't you don't need a server to do this at all so here we go it says hi down here that means everything's hooked up and running that's good news. Let's create some actual drawings, shall we? Uh, first, we're going to need a canvas. So let's create canvas. Let's give it a size, like 500. And we can add SVG as our renderer here. That's because we've downloaded that SVG library. We can do that. Um, we're not going to be animating or doing any interaction, which means we only need to draw the stuff once. Uh, in one loop and then stop drawing. So this will save our browser from continuing to work for no reason in the background. Uh, great, let's draw something, shall we? Let's draw it at 0, 0. Let's make it, oh, I don't know, 25 by 25 by 25. Let's also give it a color so we can see it. And let's also give our background a color so that we can see it. Um, I forget if you can, let's see. Can you just pass it? 
Yes, you can. Excellent. So there we have it. We have a canvas and we have our uh, rectangle and you'll see that we have this padding on the side of our canvas. And I don't really want that. So that's why I had this stuff. I've just set the margin and padding to zero within the body tag. I'm going to save that, refresh. There we go. So now we know everything is right as it should be. And this should be uber familiar to you. Let's hope it is. Uh, if not, good luck. <laughs> uh, now we're going to make this just a little smarter. Um, we're repeating ourselves here. So it's good practice in this case uh, to come up with an overall size for stuff. Um, you know what, actually, let's, let's do that a little bit later. Let's first talk about translate. So um, where we are headed is that we're gonna be drawing a lot of shapes. Let's pretend like this rectangle is a very complicated, beautiful looking crystal where we're headed. And we're going to want to make lots of them on this page. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to move somewhere on the screen and relative to wherever we move, we're going to draw a bunch of lines and maybe some shapes and some triangles, a circle, whatever. And um, we're going to have to know what the center of that location is in order to do our work. The easiest center to work with is always zero, zero. It's easy to do math with zeros. It's easy to do just about anything if you know that wherever you are, the X at the origin is zero, the Y at the origin is zero. So what do I mean by origin? And how can we guarantee that wherever we are on the screen is considered zero, zero? Well, we can move the matrix. The matrix is the coordinate system. And the way it is right now, as you see in our screen here, is that the origin, 0, 0, is in the upper left. X is this way, Y is that way. We can move that by using the translate command. We can translate the matrix to another location. In this case, I'm doing width divided by 2, height divided by 2, or the middle of the canvas. And once I've translated the origin, now 0, 0, is considered wherever we've moved to. So again, translating the origin moves where 0, 0 is. And now we can do all of our drawing relative to 0, 0 right here. And nothing will have changed except for the overall location. So let's, let's try this out. Let's translate to the middle. Once we've translated, let's draw at 0, 0. That's it. So now the, the x, y axis has been moved here. This is considered 0, 0. And when we tell it to draw a rectangle there, it appears right there. Excellent, excellent. So um, just to show you, so let's say we only move 20 in the x direction. All right, so we moved 20 over, height divided by 2 down. 0, 0 is now right here. Well, that's groovy. What if we wanted to do some more drawing? but we don't want to calculate where we are here and where we want to move to. The easiest thing to do before we move somewhere else is to reset the matrix back where it should be and then decide what we want to do. So how do you do that? You use push and pop. You wrap whatever you want to do with your fancy translate in this push pop pair. And what it does is isolate any matrix changes to inside those two. You can kind of think of it like this. And when you're done and you pop back, you're going to pop back to wherever the matrix, w matrix was when you first pushed it. All right. So if we do that and then we're to draw another rectangle at zero, zero, and let's fill this one with red, we should get this. So what this is showing you is that we have translated to a location, we have drawn our rectangle at that translated origin, and then we popped back to where we started. Where did we start? At 0, 0 in the upper left corner of our canvas. And once we're there, we can resume drawing as normal. So that's what happened here, and now we're drawing as normal, and we've just made a rectangle at the original origin <laughs> and filled it with red. Okay? So what this allows us to do is move somewhere, consider it 0, 0, do all of our drawing with a really simple center point that we can understand easily. And then when we're done, hop back like nothing happened and then move to a new place and do it all over again. And this is very helpful when we're creating complicated shapes 
that need a common center point and then want to create many of them across a page. Move there, do it, move back. Now go to a new place. Use that origin and back again. So just to review one more time, we're pushing by saying, hey, we're about to move the origin. You move the origin, you do whatever you want, and you say, hey, pop back. And you're going to pop back and do whatever you want there. So that's push and pop. Um, why don't we also cover rotation? Um, so let's save this. We're back to this. I want to go back to width divided by two. Um, so we've done this. We did the setup, drawing simple. We did translate. We did push pop. So now let's do rotate. Um, let's rotate 45 degrees. That should be pretty simple. Let's run that. Mm, that doesn't really look like 45 degrees. The reason for that is that if we look in our reference, the rotate method takes radians or degrees, but its uh, default is in radians. So we need to change the angle mode to accept degrees, and we only need to do that once, so that should go in the setup loop. And we can say angle mode uh, degrees. Global variables in these libraries are all caps. Um, they're just variables, it's nothing special because they're all caps, it's just good practice. There's a nice even 45 degrees. Okay, so um, again, Anything that we do inside of push pop is going to only affect stuff inside of there. So if we were to, I shouldn't have erased this. Um, if we're going to draw a rectangle again at, sorry, zero, zero, it should not be rotated because anything that's happening inside of push pop is isolated from everything else. If we get rid of that, we're gonna have two rectangles, both of which are at this new origin, both of which have been rotated. We can also mess with that if we change the rotation to be after we've drawn this one with no rotation. Oops, see? So everything gets affected in, in different ways. So if we wanna isolate things, make sure that we're only rotating and translating when it comes to this black rectangle at the middle then this is a nice way to do it. Push pop makes it very clean that way. All right, so we've covered push pop, rotate, and angle mode. And lastly, I just want to make sure that we do um, rectangle mode as well. If you're unfamiliar with this, uh, basically it decides how we draw our rectangles. So normally they're drawn from their upper left. So we gave it an origin, which would be kind of up here, and it would draw in this way. Uh, because we're creating shapes that are centered, these crystal structures are, are symmetrical. We want to start in the middle and draw out. We want our rect mode to be center. So we can do that up here in this way. And if we run this again, it just moves it to the exact center. You can see up here, the center of the rectangle is now located at the coordinates we tell it to draw out draw at instead of the upper left. If that's confusing to you, uh, we can do it here normally. Let's say this is our origin. Let's move it here. And we tell it to draw a rectangle. Normally it's going to, um, oh, this is bad. Normally it's going to draw that rectangle like that. But in center mode, it's going to draw it like this. It'll put the origin, um, it'll put the center of the rectangle at the origin of your coordinates not the upper left corner, right? So this is what we want. We want everything centered. So we want to move to a location, have our origin centered, do all of our drawing from there, and you can see how this would grow out to be a crystal. And then we would pop the, oops, pop the matrix back so that we start from a place that is known to us, go to the next location, treat that as though it's the origin, draw a new center rectangle or shape or whatever, and then draw our, our crystals. So that is our strategy for drawing, and we need these, um, these functions in order to do that.